13 Questions by Man Transcending Manhood in the Digital Age This week on 13 Questions, we're going to be chatting with Dr. Robert Glover, author of No More Mr. Nice Guy, living the dream down there in Mexico. Wrote a great book, helped a lot of people, one of my personal favorite books. He's also got a, some interesting answers to our questions. He's got, um, well, like I say, he wrote the book No More Mr. Nice Guy, which um, was pretty important for me. You know, it changed changed my life in a lot of ways. And um, yeah, he's got some pretty unique answers to some of the questions. He's, oh, yeah. He's super thoughtful. He's super thoughtful. He's a little over the top in some regards. And he's just, he's just, he's a great guy. Fun, fun. Definitely not what I expected. You know, when we, I think we interviewed him on Grimerica first. Yeah. But, uh, you know, definitely not what you expect when you're tracking down an author. He's just living the dream down there in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Um, Super self-aware. Yeah. You know, and that's what this, you know, podcast is kind of about. Getting guys like this to share their their experiences and their, their hope and their... Their wisdom. Yeah. Passing down wisdom. People ain't hanging around by the fire so much anymore, so we're listening to podcasts. So figure we do this the old fashioned way and instead of interviewing experts on this, that, or the other, we've just interview regular people, regular guys mostly, on um, being a guy, being a man, what they learned along the way, and uh, you know, just some just some something to think about, something maybe to 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 help you figure out your way. A few other things, of course. We are going to get the 13 questions here coming up with Dr. Robert Glover. Then we're going to fade out into some awesome music by friend of the show, Superman Christian Parrish. Um, Why? By Superman. Um, and th- that music's going to come in as, as the bonus question fades out, the bonus question segment where we ask five to seven bonus questions. And uh, then we do a little a little roundup of what they thought about the show and how they liked the questions and what they thought about answering the questions. And that, you know, goes anywhere from 5 to 25 to 30 minutes, um, plus the bonus questions. So it's worth checking out. You go, you, if you head over to 13questionspodcast.com and go to the sign-up page, you can subscribe now for 7 bucks a month, 77 bucks a year, or 700 and some, 77 lifetime. But yeah, I mean, seven bucks a month. That's what most people are going to do. Head over, do the seven bucks a month, gets you on to 13 questions. You'll get all the, you become a member, 13questionspodcast.com. That's going to get you access to our two extensions a week, which is the bonus sections of the two episodes a week. You're also going to get access to a newsletter from our staff with some journaling prompts. Um, You just got to sign up on the member page. You got a, there's a live discord and some members only forums that you can get the links to on the members only pages. Also a few hundred dollars worth of communication courses that we have licensed from TJ Walker, totaling over a hundred hours of content. Uh, you get access to instantly over at the members page as soon as you sign up and, uh, you get, you get to open source the podcast. Maybe you want to go interview your grandpa, or your dad, or your brother, or your uncle, your cousin. Yeah, we've already got some people doing that. Yeah. Yeah. We've already got some people sending in content. So uh, head over to 13questionspodcast.com and sign up today. And then that gives you the ability. I've actually, we're working right now on a page that'll, that will uh, give some like audio tips and stuff. Some audio tips on, you know, what you should do, like something as simple as hanging a sheet in a corner and sitting in the corner and recording there or things like that, talking what, into the sheet. What kind of basic equipment would people need to do this? Like? I mean, honestly, we started the show with headsets, so you don't need a lot. You can do it with free with free software, you know, get Audacity, something like that. Environment, ultimately, is more important than equipment. It's, really? Yeah, well, especially for something like this. Like, I mean, you can get a decent sound out of using... Like a USB your, your mic your laptop, in the laptop, right? Or, your or you could even do it on your phone, probably. Yeah, right? as long as you can get someplace. You can't be in a big room. You can't be in an empty room. Like if you can go find someplace small, you can do it. You, you can do it with just the uh, internal mic on the laptop. What if somebody did it on their headphones on a phone? I haven't tried that. 
Because those those recordings, like sometimes they do voice notes in there, it sounds pretty clear. But you can get a decent but then, enough. But recording. then, how do you do an interview with that? Can you splice? Like, what if you would you be able to splice? No, or, I, no that would be no. difficult, right? If, I, I mean, there's software to do it. If you're doing it over the phone, we'll have all that up on the page. If you're doing it in person, like I say, it's just a matter of like taking some time to hang up some sheets or something like that, or just you know, you can maybe take your kitchen table or go someplace where you can hang some sheets up around you so that the you get in a big open room that's going to affect your audio more than anything and uh what about if you what about if you both had an iPhone or an Android with headsets and mics let's and, not, then you, and then you went in and did that Zen let's not do your no, crazy no, 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 ideas no, no. on the show let's do that kind okay, of stuff okay. off we'll, the show we'll, we'll take that offline yeah. okay <laughs> anyway we'll get that page up sign up to be a member get the bonus extensions Get the courses, and uh, we'll have that page up right away and do your own podcast. Immortalize yeah. someone in, in history. The internet, never gone. Yeah, Maybe it'll be gone one day after the Carrington event, but I don't want to see that day. So we got Dr. Robert Glover. Yeah, got he's, a bio? Yeah, he's the author of No More Mr. Nice Guy, like you, like you mentioned. Big book for you and me and the show. A proven plan for getting what you want in love, sex, and life. And he's an internationally recognized authority on the nice guy syndrome. He's a frequent guest on talk shows, of course, and featured in numerous local and national publications. Through his book, his online classes, workshops, podcasts, blogs, consultation, and therapy groups, Dr. Glover's helped change the lives of countless men and women around the world. As a result of his work, he's helped thousands of nice guys transform from being passive, resentful victims to empowered, integrated males. Along with these personal changes have come similar transformations in these men's professional careers and intimate relationships. Of course, that's what happens when we improve ourselves, right? Dr. Yeah. Glover is the creator of Dating Essentials for Men and the director of the TPI University, and he lives in Puerto Vallarta. There you have it. Yep. And that's what the show is kind of about. Self-improvement, being authentic, yep. all that sort of stuff. Enjoy these well thought out, well thought out answers by Dr. Robert Glover. Welcome back to the Thirteen Questions podcast. We're going to be chatting with author Dr. Robert Glover tonight. Author of the book No More Mister Nice Guy. Um. Yeah, we're going to have our little questionnaire with him. Welcome to the show, Robert. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for inviting me back for yet a uh, a different show. Yeah, it should be fun. <clears throat> um, you've uh, you've got your chance to peruse the questions, so we'll jump right into it here with uh, the first question, which is, what was the best advice ever given to you? <laughs> that's the hardest question of all of them because nobody ever gave me any good advice i i read that and i thought oh fuck <laughs> what am i gonna say nobody ever gave me good advice that's and, a good and that's answer true. I, i'm not making that up um but i think the best advice i ever like read or heard is pay yourself first and so uh that's that's what i'll go with i think that's true in every aspect of the concept pay yourself first take good care of yourself not necessarily monetarily, but just pay yourself in whatever way. Yeah, you know, exercise, get enough sleep, you know, have have fun, fill your own bucket, um, whatever whatever that means. In every aspect of life, pay yourself first. It's, it reminds me of the airplane when you're supposed to put the mask on yourself first because without exactly. that, you're not good to anybody if you can't function yourself. Exactly. And, and by the way, I've got an airplane story coming up later on in, in um, one of the questions that involved my most embarrassing moments. So, oh, nice. Excellent. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. So would you modify the no good advice for today? What would you what would be your single piece of advice to give out then? Yeah, I think that'd be uh, the, the way I said it is pay yourself first. And th this is coming from a lifelong codependent, uh, a, a recovering nice guy who, you know, most of my life, I've put everybody else first and uh, tried to make everybody else's needs a priority. And it, it that doesn't work or doesn't pay in many, many different ways. So by taking good care of yourself, that's my definition of a mature adult, is somebody that takes responsibility for their needs, takes good care of themselves. So yeah. pay yourself first in every way, and then, um, then, then get from the overflow. 
Nice. But you can't you can't get from an empty book. Nice. So what was the most important lesson you learned from your parents? And and this is kind of a it could be a uh, you know, a, a trick question in a way, because it doesn't have to be an intentional lesson. Um, yeah, people, and, know, yeah. And this was another tough question because, um, and, and the, the one about role models is tough too, because it, is, is it made me really think as I looked over the questions, um, what I got from my family was not necessarily the best advice, lessons, or modeling for life. Um, so, um, you know, so I first read it. Okay, my dad's advice was keep your back elbow up when you're at bat. Uh, my mother's advice was don't be like your father. Uh, the light, the lessons I learned from them just by watching how they lived and and how they talked was life is hard, life is difficult. Don't take chances, don't take risks, and once something is broken, it can never be fixed. Um, that that was basically what my family taught. What book has been most influential on your life and why? I'm going to pick two. Um, one I read several years ago. I've, I've heard, I've read it's the all time best selling self-help book and is a book called the road less traveled by Scott mm -hmm. Peck. And I've, I've read it in the past. It's been a while. I need to get back and read it again. I've probably read it three or four times. Um, it just had a big impact about living a life of love, of discipline. And, um, and I, I, I heard him speak years ago um, before he died. And uh, he was actually, in a way, uh, a good mo role model for, for my moving forward and, and actually writing a book myself because um, he was far from perfect. He was a very flawed human being. And that was really good news for me. So he was a good role model that you can be a flawed human being and you can still make a difference in the world. So as, as book number one, Road Less Traveled. Uh, book number two is more recent. I read it about 12, 13 years ago. And and that's The Way of the Sumer Superior Man by David Data. <laughs> nice. I've, probably, I've probably reviewed it, read it 20, 30 times over and over again. Um, I, I've been working with a life coach for about a year now who's been a, a student of data's for years. So that I'd say that book has influenced me maybe as much as any. Nice. So do you have any daily habits or rituals? And, and if so, would, would you recommend those for others? Yeah. One is a fairly recent habit or ritual and that that's a, a morning ritual where, um, my wife and I take the kids to school, drop them off, and she and I go to the beach for about 45 minutes and just sit on the beach oh, and watch nice. the sun come up. That's Not everybody gets to do that, but that's a nice ritual. And then we come back, and she goes off to exercise class. And then my ritual from there is I have a notebook where I chart out my day in terms of uh, both practices, things I want to accomplish, what I'm going to do in the gym that day. And then I do some yoga, some meditation, some meditative reading, uh, 30 to 45 minutes in the morning. And uh, I, I, I recommend that practice. Nice. Um, a couple of others that I, I'm going to recommend. Um, one is a, a daily gratitude practice, which I've been doing for about 15 years since uh, my divorce about 15 years ago, where throughout the day I just think of things I, for which I feel grateful uh, every morning before I open my eyes. First thing, before I crawl out of bed, I just lie there and just am grateful I'm alive and then just think of a few things I feel grateful for. So that's, that's a beautiful daily practice. And one more, this is relatively new as well, and that is taking naps. Um, I, I, I was really sick about 10 months ago for about three months. Couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Ended up, found out I had a tumor blocking my small intestine. And for a while, I had no energy. And I lost over 30 pounds. And at times, I was taking two, three naps a day because I, I had nothing, nothing going on, no energy. And um, I, I had to kind of cut the guilt out of that, that like, you know, why are you taking naps? Well, because there's something wrong with me. I got to sleep. And so I, I really got where I could take guilt-free naps and so now I, I try to, you know, uh, at least lay on the bed and relax for about 30 minutes every afternoon. And whether that's sleeping for about 30 minutes or maybe reading or just relaxing and being grateful. So naps are, are really cool. I recommend them. I recommend a good nap as well. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, now, if I were to talk to your best friend, what would be the one thing they would say you need to work on the most and why? Uh, he'd probably say I need to work on listening better. And that, that's probably uh, self-revealing why is that um, I'm a professional listener. I've, I've been a psychotherapist for 30 years, and, and I honestly don't listen real well. Kind of once I think I've got the gist of something, I'm ready to dive in. And uh, sometimes I need to be more patient and let people finish saying everything that they would like to say. That's a good one. That's a tough one. That This show has made us uh, learn to listen as well. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to talk. Yeah. So what are you most curious about? Oh, probably the thing that maybe every human has been curious about for all time is, you know, what's, what's the big picture? Where, where did it all begin? Where did it all come from? What's out there? What's behind it all? Um, that's, it's, it's interesting to speculate. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I don't, anybody that claims that they know I'm dubious, uh, that anybody actually does. Uh, but it's interesting to hear people's theories. What's your current leading theory? <sighs> Probably. <laughs> Probably my leading theory is that I, I say that I believe in God. I just don't give him a, a name, a plan, or a program. Um, I, I grew up fundamental Christian, by the way, and I have two degrees in religion, and I was a minister in a fundamental church for eight years. Um, but I'd say that if, if you had to ask me, I like Bill Maher's definition. He says, I'm an I don't knower. I'm an I don't knower. If I had to say, I'd say that um, – that God or everything is creative energy. And um, I would say that uh, the one thing I've taken from Buddhist thought that I like is getting away from a dualistic view of, of the world where uh, more of a unified world that uh, we are both the creator and the created. There's no distinction. So that's kind of what I'm bouncing around with these days. It's like that old Bill Hicks quote. Uh, so that leads us to the much anticipated airplane answer to the next question, which is what was the most ex embarrassing experience of your life? Well, and I'm not sure if this is the most embarrassing. I haven't had a lot. I've had a few, uh, a couple that involved public speaking. Um, but this one is most recent. It, it happened within the last year or so. Um, and I, I was traveling, I assume, from Seattle um, back down to Puerto Vallarta, where I live. And I often go through L.A. and spend a night with my friend who lives in Marina del Rey. And so um, I was about taking off from LAX to fly to Puerto Vallarta, about a two and a half hour flight. And I was on an exit row. And um, luckily, there was nobody on the two seats next to me. I was on the aisle. And um, just before, you know, they're about to close the door, I thought, I need to head back and go use the bathroom. I had coffee in the morning, gone to the lounge in the airport, drank coffee, and I've got a little girl bladder. So I, I'm about to head back and go to the bathroom. They said, everybody needs to be in their seat. We're closing the door, blah, blah, blah. I thought, oh, okay, okay. Oh, boy. Remember, that, remember this is LAX, okay? Um, so, I got, Okay. So we sit there, and after about 20 minutes of just sitting there, haven't pushed back from the gate, the pilot says, sorry, you know, we've been slow pushing away. We had a light on that we had to check, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, by this time, I'm, I mean, I, I put on my headphones. I listen to easy listening music. I listen to heavy rock music. I practice breathing. I practice no thought. I practice thinking about anything else. I practice relaxing into it. I, 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 everything I could do in my bladder was just, bursting and i i i, I thought, i'm not gonna and, and finally we pulled away taxied remember again this is lax any of you who've ever taxied around lax <laughs> so another another 20 minutes just to taxi out so now this is like 40 minutes after i had to go to the bathroom and finally we take off and, and most flights leaving lax fly out over the ocean and right as we got up and i'm looking down at the ocean i thought I can't hold it. And I, and I'd, I had some Kleenexes I'd stuffed at them like Navy blue shorts and stuffed it and started to just let a little bit go. And I thought, fuck it. This actually feels good. And I just let it all go. <laughs> and I, I, I just emptied my bladder just, um, <laughs> and then once we got high enough, you know, I, I kind of, you know, put something over the front of me, walked back to the bathroom, dried off best I could, 
took a bunch of paper towel back, dried my seat off, glad nobody was sitting next to me, and uh, basically just sat in my my wet sh- pee wet shorts all the way to Puerto Vallarta till I could get off the plane, and my wife was there to meet me. And, um, I thought this is going to make a good story someday. <laughs> there and you today go. Today's the day. Well, I'm sure your wife was thrilled to hear the story when she picked you. You know, you, you know how good wives can be. Good wives is kind of like, oh, that doesn't matter. And I go, yeah, it did to me. <laughs> she goes, no, it doesn't matter. And I said, I probably smell. And she goes, that doesn't matter. So, okay. I have to send you a jug for your carry on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Car- carry an empty, wa- empty water bottle with me, like a trucker. Get a Gatorade. It's got a wider mouth. Yeah, I, I was thinking that actually as I said it. Get get you know the the wider mouth bottles, you know, your, and, and because I I need as wide of a mouth bottle as I can get. <laughs> What's your greatest fear, and how do you overcome it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not not needing a Gatorade uh, wide wide neck. <laughs> My greatest fear, um, I think, what that probably was was to to just live alone and and live on my own and make it on my own um i I married my first wife two days after i graduated from college so i went from living in a dorm with roommate to being married um i met my second wife while still married to my first so there wasn't much space in between my two marriages and so after 25 years of marriage i'd never lived alone as an adult and um and it was one of the most liberating things probably I've ever done was to just realize, hey, I can live alone. I can be by myself. I can be solo. I, I can handle life. I, I don't need to be codependent. I can get it done. Mm. And, and that was very liberating. And I learned that I really liked living alone. Nice. What about uh, your biggest, biggest regret? I don't have many. I, I, I've thought about that before. Um, <laughs> I have fucked up in some really major ways, and um, but I wouldn't be where I am today without those incremental steps in, in my journey. And every one of those fuck-ups have led to some kind of growing awareness of myself. And, um, and so if what I've said in the past that my only regret is that I didn't read to my son and stepson more. Uh, they were six months apart, and when they were little, they every night they wanted me to tell them stories or read to them, and I was too enmeshed with my second wife, and so I, oh no, I, I got to get back to taking care of my wife and and making her happy, and and I, I wish I'd read to them more. Mm-hmm. And, um, but my son now is thirty three, and he's got an eleven year old daughter, and and he's just like the most amazing dad. So. Um, I, I think probably his parenting style is just do the opposite of what I did. And that makes him a really good dad. So, so maybe I didn't wound him too bad by not reading to him more, but that, I wish I had. We'll kind of switch gears a little bit to hit some sort of bigger picture stuff. So what, what's the best and worst thing about being male to you? Um, that was another one of the tough questions. Cause I actually couldn't think of the worst thing about being male. Um, I, I guess that we'll all, if we live long enough, we'll all die of prostate cancer. I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I like being a guy. Um, I, I've never seen it as a burden. I've never seen it as, so maybe the worst thing about being a guy is, I, I know people will call me out on this, but in general, we, we, we can't have multiple orgasms and um, we got to wait a while in between. Um, I, I, I do envy women in that way. That's a so, great answer. Yeah. Especially the women I've been with, they seem to come a lot. So, um, <laughs> I, I, that's maybe the worst part I, I you know, I, I tell, I, I kind of practice a little bit of Tantra. And so I, I maybe come once or twice a month and my, my wife probably comes 60 to a hundred times a month. So, um, but we have fun. Uh, and, and the best part of being a guy is I, you know, I just love everything about being a guy and, um, you know, I can pee standing up and, and maybe most of it, maybe the biggest thing is that every door is open to me and, um, I get there's, you know, I, I've got that, that white guy privilege. I, you know, I, I, I was born in the fifties in America where being a white middle-class guy, you know, the, the world was my oyster. So, but so my experience in life is that every door is open to me in general. I can walk down the street and not be afraid. 
and and women can't say that in most places of the world. So I'm 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 glad about that as a guy. Good point. Who were your role models and why? Yeah, this was another one of the tough questions, kind of going back to the answers about my family and what they taught me about life. And I, I would say maybe this is even a regret. Um, I, I wished in, in my own personal development and career, I, I'd consciously gone and found more mentors or, or more role models. Um, and, and I would say because I haven't had a lot of those uh, my life as a guy has maybe been harder than it needed to be because I think we men really need that. And so probably the best answer I have for role models is various teachers I had along the way that really challenged me um, intellectually, challenged me to, to work hard, to bring my best, to, to be intellectually curious. And so I, I can think of several um, teachers I had in high school and in college and in graduate school that really inspired me and brought out the best in me. So I, I'd say th those teachers. What institution of society or structural aspect of modern life would you change given the chance? Wow. If I was king of the world, um, <laughs> there'd be no more Kings. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, two things that, you know, when I looked over that question earlier, I thought, wow. Um, one is that I, I, I would change the political structure worldwide. I live in a third world country. I live in Mexico. I'm a U.S. citizen. Um, I, I see, unfortunately, the United States going in the same direction uh, of, of countries like Mexico and other third world countries where the, the few people that have had all the power all along are getting more powerful and hoarding more money. And so I would change the political structure where government actually gave a fuck about people um, and not wasn't just set up to perpetuate the, the wealth and power of those who already have wealth and power. Um, and, and I'm not a communist, but something's got to change. Um, government has to become accountable. Mm -hmm. So that'd be one. The other one is I'd, I'd try to get men and women to quit being so pissed off at each other. Um, you know, men are out there being pissed off at women and women are out there being pissed off at men. And, you know, we got the, this, battle of the sexes and battle of the genders. And, you know, we've all been hurt by the opposite sex. I have, I've hurt the opposite sex. Um, but if I could change something, I, I would try to find a way to help us to have a deeper understanding of what it means to not be who we are and what it means to be in somebody else's skin. What is the most courageous thing you have ever done in your life or seen? I'm going to share a, a done and seen. Uh, done is probably told the truth when I was scared shitless. Um, for me, that, that, that's taken all the courage I could muster because uh, there have been a few times where I needed to fess up to some things and it just scared the shit out of me. And uh, I, I leaned into that and told the truth and survived. So, That'd probably be the scariest things or most courageous things I've done. Um, a story that sticks in my mind, and then maybe this guy could even be a role model, but I, but I don't know him, um, that to me was courageous. Uh, it was a 4th of July celebration uh, in Tacoma, Washington, where I was living there at the time. And um, they had a big air show and celebration down by the waterfront. They close off the roads and a couple hundred thousand people come out. And I was walking with a buddy, and it was a beautiful summer day, 4th of July. And um, I was walking with a buddy. The streets were kind of crowded. And we came along a group of a couple boys kind of circling each other like they're going to fight each other in the middle of the crowd. They were probably all of 15, 16 years old, two boys. One of them looked like the aggressor. One of them looked like he was kind of more scared of it. The, the, the aggressor looked like he had a few buddies standing nearby. And my buddy and I just kind of walked up to that and, you know, Tacoma has gang violence and you know I, I didn't know what to do and I my buddy and I were just watching these two kids they never did lay any punches and this African-American guy came walking by with his little girl on his shoulders and he just walked through the crowd walked between the two boys and in a deep voice just said you two break it up and get out of here now, I don't know if he was like a school vice principal or a coach or, yeah, he just had this presence. He had his little girl riding on his shoulders and just in like, with just a few words, 
he actually rescued those boys. They didn't want to fight. He let them save face. He let them both, you know, head in different directions and everything just went back to normal. Just like he came and left and it's like, wow, who was that guy? Mm. So that that's that's imprinted in my brain. I, to me, that was that's that's the guy I want to be. That's how I want to live my life. Nice. What does it mean to be a man in today's world? As I said before, this is not necessarily true in in every culture um, or all parts of the world. But to me, it does mean unlimited opportunity. I, I can do whatever I want to do. Um, and for me, what that means is I am more and more ways I can make a difference, that I can change the world, I can, I can be powerful, I can make people's lives better. So for me, being a man means that uh, I, I've just got a zillion ways and a zillion avenues um, to make a difference. And, and so for me, that's what it is, is making a difference. Wow. Great answers, Robert. We'd like to thank you for, for coming on 13 questions and giving us. That, that was 13 already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> giving us and our listeners some, some, some things to think about and <clears throat> some, some questions to, to sort of, um, um, I'm at a loss for the word ponder. here ponder. to ponder. Yeah. Let's go with that <laughs> to ponder. Um, yeah, big thanks to you. Big thanks to the listeners. Um, yeah, of course, if you guys want to check out the bonus segment and the, the roundup with Robert, uh, go over to mantranscending.com, become a member. That'll get you access to the premium podcasts, the writing exercises, the courses, and everything else over there. Um, but most importantly, you'll get to hear the rest of the answers from Robert Glover. And for those of you, talk some more. How cool is that? Exactly. And for those of you who don't want to, uh, thanks for listening. Okay, we're back here in the bonus segment with our five bonus question roundup for our members only, the members only section where we can let loose a little bit. We can expand a little on some answers if we want, and uh, after that, we'll do a little. Does that mean I can swear more too? Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. Um, The first question of the bonus section. What would you tell your teenage self? Lighten up and don't worry so much. Everybody else is scared. Nobody else knows what they're doing. So just, yeah, don't take yourself so seriously. Just, just go try something. Just go try. Even if it's scary, to go try. I don't want to have a night. I don't want no hope when I know what. I don't want no hope when I. I don't want no hope when I know what. I don't want no hope when I. I don't want no hope when I know what. I don't want no hope when I. I don't want no hope when I know what. I don't want no hope when I. I don't want no hope when I know what. I don't want no hope when I. I don't want no hope and I know why Why is one man rich and another man poor? Why we ain't satisfied? Why we gotta have more? Why your suicide rates on the rest so high? Why I tell you the truth but you say don't lie? Why is being a good father at an all-time low? Why is it acceptable? Yo, why I don't know Why she blame him and he blame her? It's useless Ask yourself this question Why you making excuses? Why do parents gotta bury their kids? Why we text and drive? Not caring how scary it is Why you so hard to forgive And leave the past behind And if you did, then that's divine Why don't you help your brother when you see him fall? Why do we act like God don't see it all? Why do we call them black, them white, them Asians And use labels? Now that's racism I don't want no hope in it 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 Why is it innocent people locked up for life While some people can't say nothing nice why do we always got a question with all of the means? And why won't you follow your dreams? Tell me why. The night when you took my dad, why'd you let me see my grandpa cry? And tell me why. And why do you choose to hide, even though you was born to fly? And tell me why. And why don't we turn from all the hate? And why don't we learn from all mistakes? Why do I keep on wrecking these fat beats? And teachers don't make more than 
professional athletes and why? This should be considered entertainment and not therapy. We hope you benefit from our resources available at 13questionspodcast.com. Thank you for listening.